reasons. Do not adjust your set. Ladies and gentlemen, I cast on a sock. <laughs> I am a real life museum curator where I live in Florida with my husband and welcome back for a new year, new episode, all that good stuff. It is a delightfully crisp uh, day here in Florida. So I thought I would take advantage of the lovely, 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 I thought I would take advantage of the lovely weather and sit down and film a new podcast episode with you guys. I'm going to apologize in advance for any background noise. I live in the most densely populated county within Florida, uh, not the most populated, that would be Miami-Dade, but um, people to square miles, ooh, I'm watching my phone wiggle, but people to square miles, there are more people where I live, there's about a million people in my county. So, with that being said, I apologize, my one neighbor is doing something with a bandsaw, here another one uh, with a spray paint can, and there seems to be some flights taking on and off as well. So I apologize in advance for the background noise and I have my tripod set up with my phone in it, but it is getting blown a little bit in the breeze. So I apologize if you guys find yourself uh, wafting in the breeze today. So I have a lot to talk about because I feel like it has been forever and a day since I last sat down to film. And so I'm just gonna jump right in and I even wrote down notes for myself so I can remember some of the natter stuff towards the end. All right, we are going to start things with finished objects. And if you watched my last video, it was of Zoe, who is my sister, who is the Felicity Yarn Studio here on YouTube. She also dyes yarn under that moniker. Uh, her and I hosted a sneak along throughout the last quarter or so of 2020. And so we both knit the Woodlark Shawl by Larke of the Fiber Tales podcast. And we sat down together and filmed ourselves sneaking. And so yeah, here is my finished shawl in all of its finished glory. I knit this out of Lishizi Bush in the, I think the camera's actually more this way. I knit this out of Vichy Bush in the Ecru or Off-White colorway. The light blue is their aquamarine colorway, and then this dark blue is Holst uh, Garn, and that is in the Mariner's Tale. And if you watched the episode with Zoe, I did express some fears over uh, whether or not the color would bleed on this. And so what I did was I soaked this in really cold water. I added just a drop of some Unicorn Power Scour because with the Holst, part of what makes it so affordable is when you get the yarn, it still has, sorry, the Coast Guard's going by. I can see the plane right now. Um, but I live a mile and a half, two miles from the beach. So hopefully they're just doing a survey. Um, anyways, um, Holst, when you purchase it, it still has the oil that they use when they manufacture the yarn to spin it into yarn. That is still coated around the strands. And so that's part of what makes it so affordable is that the onus of washing that spinning oil off then falls to you, which is not a big deal, a little bit of water, so um, gets rid of it. So I threw just the littlest bit of power scour on to my shawl and that released those spinning oils and it has bloomed up beautifully and it's also softened the bishi bush up a lot so that is what the finished shawl looks like and to finish it when you're done sticking the way the pattern is written she has you pick up along the selvage that you cut along and then um and then you fold that fold and sew that down i did not feel like sewing and so what I ended up doing was 
I picked up along the edge on the front, and then I also picked up along the edge on the back. Um, and one of the modifications I made to this pattern was where the steep channel runs, I did a purl stitch on either side of the steep. So that way on the front side and the on the right and wrong side of the fabric, there's that little U-shaped channel from working those purl stitches. And so what that did was it gave me a pretty easy visual clue running along here of where I could pick up along that salvage when it comes time to sandwich my knits. And so what I did then was I picked up, like I said, on the front and the back, and I did do a contrast color in the, the holst, mainly because I did not feel like breaking out a second ball of yarn in the, the cream. And so I knit up three rows on each side, and then I did a three needle bind off together along the top. So it creates this nice seam. It actually creates a nice, strong um, reinforcement along the top up here. And it also sandwiches in all the runaway yarns from the steek as well, all the cut stitches. So I did take a moment to write down my thoughts on this pattern and kind of, yeah, general ideas, reviews, rundowns, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, this is just a snarky comment, but um, while I was knitting this, the, the last section here, while beautiful, kind of reminds me of butters, particularly when I was working on it. This pattern is gorgeous. I love the finished knit. I think it's absolutely beautiful. However, I do think it leaves a little bit to be desired in how it's written. Uh, and that is, I have a couple things that I think would make it a lot easier to knit. The way the pattern is written is you increase along this top edge here as you go out. And the way she writes it with the charts is the repeat uh, or the increase is its own chart and then followed by the pattern repeat. If you ask me, that all could have been put into one chart for each color work section. It would have made it a lot easier. She also doesn't include the center spine on her charts. And so that's another thing. It, she just gives the direction to then mirror for the other side of the shawl. So if it were me, writing the pattern, I would have had the increase instructions, the repeat bounded in a, you know, a repeating box as they do, then the center spine, then the uh, reverse section of the chart on the other side with a bounding box, and then showing the increase stitches on the left side of the shawl as well as the right. That's just my two cents. I think it would have made it a lot more enjoyable of a knit than the beginning before you figure those things out. It, it is pretty frustrating. And I consider myself a pretty, an intermediate knitter in terms of being able to read charts and color work and, you know, construction and all of that stuff. And I even found it a little bit challenging to get started. The other thing is she writes out instructions for every row, uh, but she doesn't actually write out the chart repeat. She just says, follow the chart. Um, so in many ways, it's both overly full of information and vague at the same time. Other than that, those, those are my things. I just think it could be a little bit clearer uh, in, in how it's written. Otherwise, it's a gorgeous pattern. It's a gorgeous knit. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the play on color and texture in here is really enjoyable, especially if you're someone who enjoys a nice tactile knit. Um, this yarn itself is really nice and squishy. It's got a little bit of a crunchiness to it. So once again, it adds to that tech tactile experience while you're knitting. And yeah, I am really pleased with how this turned out. I think it's really gorgeous. I had debated gifting it to my friend Haley, who lives out in Oregon and will get way more use and wear out of it than I ever could living here in Florida. But Honestly, it's so pretty at the end of the day, I don't think I can give it away. Um, I know she's had a really rough year last year, so I do think I am going to knit her something and mail it to her and just as a little pick-me-up. But I had been thinking it was going to be this, and it's not. Um, 
And you guys might notice with this Ishi Bush and the Aquamarine, it is the same color as the sweater I am currently wearing, which is my Poet Sweater by Sari Nordlin. This was going to be one of my Rhinebeck 2020 sweaters, but we all know what happened last year. My one neighbor who I never see who lives across the street from me, I mean, I never see her coming or going. She's come in and out of her house like six times now. And she's not even like the nosiest of my nosy neighbors. It's amazing. And on that note, I think it's time to move into works in progress. So I have been putting a dent into my love note sweater and I wanted to sit down and film because I have a decision to make you guys. Maybe you can weigh in. If you watched my last sit down episode, you will know that uh, my bust measurement falls in between pattern sizes for, for this garment and the amount of ease that I want. So my clever idea was to attempt doing bust darts for this first time. Um, my bust darts were a bust, uh, quite frankly. <laughs> so I did film a video on how I worked with those bust darts. What I ended up doing, as I have learned now, was horizontal bust starts, which is working a series of short rows across the front of your bust. And what horizontal bust starts do is they add length. It doesn't make sense, but they add length within your bust so that if you're someone where your upper bust and your full bust are drastically different in measurement, say there's like a four or five inch difference in your bust measurement, you would work those to create a little extra fabric. That way, as the fabric comes over your bust, it gives you a little bit more fabric to come in there and it, your sweater won't rise up as much. What I learned after I worked my horizontal bust starts was that I needed to do vertical bust starts, which is a series of increases and decreases worked along the side of the bust. And that actually adds more, um, width within your sweater versus adding length it adds width i don't know why vertical bust starts add width and horizontal bust starts add length it doesn't make sense in terms of nomenclature but whatever um, it's literally the opposite of what each of those words means like vertical you think would add length and horizontal would add width you know going with the direction that those lines go but no so anyway can you tell i'm a little peeved about that so anyways, I worked these bus starts the other night, filmed a video of how I calculated how to do those horizontal bus starts. If you guys would like to see that, I'm happy to edit and put that video up. I probably still will anyways, because hopefully it'll be useful for someone, even though, even though it did not achieve the desired goal that I wanted it to for this knit. So after doing a little bit of internet sleuthing, I actually found a really good online blog post that I'll link down below that uh, she basically gives you a formula for calculating your bus starts, doing vertical and horizontal darts. So what I can do is I can either rip back to just under my underarm seam here. I can rework those as the pattern calls for or I can just keep rolling with it. I've already knit probably a good two inches of the body. And what I also did as I've been making my decision is I fully wet blocked the top half of the sweater because I wanted to see how much growth I would get with the lace opening up as well with that. So yeah, I got a decision to make. I don't know, what, what would you guys say? Would you go back, rework the darts? So if there's a little bit more room here, I mean, I probably have about an inch of ease on each size, which I would like. I mean, that's a comfortable fit. And I would like just a smidge more. Or, yeah, so should I just roll with it, try that technique on the next one, or rip it out and recalculate? So I failed to mention when I started talking about this because I just jumped straight into the troubleshooting, which is that I am knitting this out of Sincere Sheep. It is her Eureka DK base. It's a 100% Rambouille and a naturally dyed yarn as well. 
And so, yeah, I'm loving the yarn. It's really soft. It softened up a lot with blocking. I think I threw just a shot of Euclid, or not Euclid, of the Unicorn Power Scour in this as well. I swear, I don't know, like my neighborhood is Grand Central Station right now. So anyways, what would you guys do? Would you rip it back, start over, save that tip for a future knit where things might need to be adjusted for the girls? I don't know, what do you think? I'm half tempted just to keep going with it because um, I feel like I'm a good chunk way through the body. I'm gonna try it on when this is done. Maybe I'll stick some footage in of me trying this on again and see how I like the fit now that this is good and dry. Um, but yeah, so that is, that is my love note. I think I've been holding things up over here out of frame. I think that's all I am going to say about my love note for now. And yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Rip it, keep going. Save that technique to try on something else. I'm curious to see what you guys would do given my quandary. Perhaps I should have started this episode by saying that part of why I have not sat down and filmed is that my knitting mojo has been on the fritz. It's like some days all I want to do is knit or while I'm at work all I can think is like man I really wish I was at home right now knitting and then I come home and all I do is sit on my couch watch Netflix with my husband and I don't really work on any projects and part of that is the roadblock on that and part of that is the roadblock I'm experiencing on my next knit that I'm going to show you guys next knit that is a tongue twister next knit not really you just have to slow down and not talk so fast so next up is my top words this is the Rizzo top it is a pattern by Amy Appel of Poison Girl Knits and I the last time I showed this I think I had finished knitting the back of the garment. The next step is you pick up uh, along the shoulders and then you'll join for the round after you work down to the armpits. Uh, so I picked this up the other night and unfortunately Mr. Yarn Curator and I were talking and I didn't really pay attention to the abbreviation in the pattern and so I picked this up and I started working it and you begin to do the shaping for the front and the back of the sweater, but all of this in here is supposed to be seed stitch. Totally skipped that direction. Uh, so I just, luckily with this, I don't feel like I'm nearly as far gone into the pattern slash ease of fixing it is way easier on this knit than on my love note. So I am going to rip this out repick up along this selvage edge and go again and that's fine because this looks pretty up here looks really sloppy anyways and it was probably gonna bug me and so I'm glad I stopped when I did because this was like an hour or two's worth of work that I'm ripping out so I don't feel too bad about that but between this my love note uh the doozy that was picking up and finishing my woodlark I just like have not been feeling the knitting uh, and I will show you guys my my stone crop because I have made some progress on it not a whole lot so the last time I showed it off on the podcast it was uh, here where this stitch marker is so right, let's see, so I just finished working this bobble row. I've knit about another inch or two on my stone crop and this one is currently at a snail's pace because I am working another one of these repeats that has the bobble in it right here and those just take a long time and I kind of just don't have the motivation to do that right now. 
but I really would like to make progress on this and shocker the only way to make progress is to actually knit the damn thing so it's kind of a catch-22 I don't have the motivation to knit it yet I want it done um, so yeah and I know once I get past this row it'll things will go a lot faster I am at the widest point of the sweater right now and so I just need to get past it and work a few more rows that are super long. Then I'll divide off the sleeves and we can get chugging along again. For those of you who might be new here, I am knitting this out of uh, Manos del Uruguay in their eggplant colorway. And then the contrast color is uh, yarn that I spun. It is an 80-10-10 blend of Targi, Silk, and Bamboo super soft, super silky feeling. Um, I really, really can't wait to finish this knit. And yeah, I love, I love the way it's working up. So I just need to suck it up. Maybe now that I've filmed, that'll be the kick in the ass that I need to get going. And last but not least for works of progress, as I mentioned, my mojo has been a go-go short circuiting on the fritz whatever analogy you want to use and <laughs> so i took drastic actions do not adjust your set ladies and gentlemen i cast on a sock for those of you who have been on the podcast or have been here for a while you will know sock knitting is not my jam i am not a sock knitter i don't enjoy the process i just I barely wear socks as it is uh, because I live in Florida and it's like 90 degrees most of the year. Like seriously, uh, on January 2nd, we were running the air conditioner here. It's January 4th and I'm sitting outside in a sweater, so I'm not complaining. But yeah, we were two days into the year and we already had to turn on our AC unit. And you're like, Naomi, why do you knit a bunch of sweaters? Because I work in an office that's cold. and every now and then we do get cold weather and there's travel anyways focus so in an effort to fix my mojo i decided to try an evasive measure and just cast on something completely different and out of my usual so this is kind of a frankenstein vanilla sock recipe i cast on 64 stitches i worked a one by one rib for about half an inch i think about eight rows and then I continued working straight for another three quarters of an inch or so uh, just to do shorty socks. I then started my heel turn and I did a short row heel. This is the New Depths heel by Becky Sorensen, who has the Soprano Knits podcast, I believe, on YouTube and turned the heel, kept going down the body, and then I used the rounded toe decrease uh, instructions from the jelly roll sock pattern. Um, so that is how I cobbled together my sock. I had originally planned on doing the heel instructions from, from a different um, pattern and I'll put it down below. I can't think of the name right now but they were doing stripes in their heel and some of the stripes you held the yarn double and I wasn't sure if that was to reinforce the heel. I don't know, I didn't even feel like figuring it out because once again, socks aren't really my jam and I didn't really care that much so I just found a different heel pattern. Yeah, shoot me. Uh, <laughs> so I did cast on the second sock almost immediately after and I have not nearly gone as hard on this one as I did on this one. Uh, so I think I worked the sock and I turned the heel one night when I was listening to a book after my husband had gone to bed and it just kind of sat like that for another week or two and then on the first we actually had a joint phone call between my mom, my sister, and my aunts, we all knit, so we all showed each other our projects, and uh, I knit most of the body of the sock on that phone call, so I only have like, so I only need to do about five or six more rows on this, and then I will be able to close the heel and 
hopefully the next time I sit down, I will have another quick finished object. And this will also fulfill, so every year, since I don't like knitting socks, every year I attempt knitting a pair of socks to see if it'll stick. Uh, so these count as my 2020 and my 2021 socks since technically this was finished in 2020 and this will be finished in 2021 and I will fulfill my own self-imposed quota for the year and since I make the quota and it's self-imposed I get to set the rules for what does or doesn't count for what I choose to dictate to myself. You know you guys I am just winning at the podcasting today. I am just just winning. Um, <laughs> So this is knit out of Felicity Yarn Studio, and it was one of the full skeins from her advent calendar, I believe, in 2018. It's this beautiful tonal gray with uh, neon speckles of pink and lime and lemon and orange and purple and greens. So it's a gray with a neon rainbow speckle. It's really pretty, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and it's something that I probably, I think I caked this yarn up to make the elf male sweater out of originally held with some other yarn in my stash and I didn't like the way it was swatching up together. So I'm happy to use this and I will throw the scraps into my bits and bobs blanket that I'm working on. So I have been doing some spinning throughout December and then uh, the lovely Gemma of Gemma B Makes. She invited Zoe and I to participate in a little, another self-imposed challenge called Spinuary in which the goal is to spin a little bit every day throughout the month of January. And I have been doing that and actually through most of December what I was doing, I was spinning some baby doll South Down Fiber because I am endeavoring to spin 12 different breeds this year. I guess that's an unofficial crafting resolution, but um, I want to start exploring different sheep breeds, how they handle, how they wear, what they feel like, etc. Uh, because that's one of the things with, I feel like knitting is kind of like a gateway drug into crafting and then you start to explore other rabbit holes and avenues. Uh, within the craft and so with spinning one of the things I learned when I first started spinning was you don't know how much you don't know Until you know you don't know it and so with spinning I realized how much I don't know about the actual sheep and raw material that the yarn comes from and You know how that behaves what it feels like next to your skin the elasticity all those things So one of the things I am doing this year is I am once a month or I want to do one a month is a different type of fiber and just learn more about it. So last month I started spinning up some Baby Doll South Down. We will be putting a video up of that later and uh, it's a three-ply sock yarn. But anyways, what I was saying with that. So as I started spinning that last month, I actually got into the good habit of um, I get off work at 4.30, Mr. Yarn Curator gets off work around 5 o'clock, and so I was taking about that 30-40 minute lag in between when I get off work and get home and when he gets home to sit down and spend some time with my wheel just working on a little bit of that at a time. So I think I'm going to continue that into January in hopes that I can keep spinning through. So I have started a spinning a fade for a sweater although I might do the shift the big uh, shawl by Andrea Mowry um, but I'm doing five braids of yarn from Wound Up Fiber Arts and holy cow her stuff is soft it's all merino and it's just gorgeous to work with it's like spinning butter it drafts like a dream in your hand and I'm really looking forward to that but um, I'm also going to do that as a standalone video so that just leaves acquisitions and natter and I feel like this video is already at an obscenely long length and editing Naomi is not going to be happy with present day Naomi and her rambling. So I guess speaking of crafty resolutions and it being the new year is one of the things I have wanted to do for the longest time is learn how to sew and feel like I'm a proficient enough slower, slower. Um, sewer to 
make my own clothes. So what I did is I have eyed this pattern. It's the Wickstein dress by, or it's the shift dress by the clothing company or pattern company Wickstein. And this is a pattern that I have eyed for a hot minute. It um, has a couple different modifications. You can see here on the back. It can be done as a shirt, kind of a longer sleeve shirt, and a dress, and with waist ties. So part of what convinced me to take the plunge on this is that it, um, there's a few YouTube videos out there of people making this dress, and in one of them, I haven't even opened this yet, but in one of them, it comes with this nice paper booklet, um, so the pattern's in here. I don't want to get too far into it because I haven't done anything for it but it comes with this nice booklet and within it it has like step-by-step -step picture diagrams for what you're supposed to do um, so it looks pretty foolproof and like I said I can kind of follow along step-by-step -step with other people who have made this and I have eyed this pattern for a really long time it's um, I love the dress I kind of this is kind of the, the staple of my wardrobe in a couple different varieties. Just a nice, loose, easy fitting staple that you can throw a knitted top on over or a belt and you're good to go. So um, I ordered this from Freeman's Creative. It is a yarn shop in Durham, North Carolina. We vid visited there last March. Um, I believe I've also seen this pattern for sale on Fancy Tiger's website. They're a yarn shop located out of Denver, Colorado. And yeah, part of what prompted me to get it from Freeman's is I know they have been doing some virtual sewing uh, classes and tutorials. So I'm keeping my eye out on their class list because I might sign up for one of those as well. Um, from Freeman's, I also got linen to make the dress out of so i believe this is a linen cotton blend like a 50 50 blend of the two thought that would be great for down here in florida and it is nice and sturdy so my goal is to hopefully make it out of this fabric and yeah i got it out of a red and kind of a plum color i'm actually really loving the red i really like to wear red a lot um i think it works well with my coloring and then the plum looked nice and happy as well. And another pattern that I've acquired, which is for a Victorian walking skirt. And um, so I might try that out of the plum. And I believe I bought three or four yards each of these. And then my last acquisition is not yarny either, but um, a different Gemma of the Midnight Diary, formerly known as the Project Bag. She did a giveaway over the summer. So over the summer, Gemma did a Skype interview with Tabitha Hedrick, and she had just released this book, and it is called Switch and Knit Stitch Dictionary. It's really cool. It's kind of like she gives you the basics for a garment and then stitch patterns and so if you know i don't know say your pattern you want to put in a stitch repeat with it's over six stitches then you can kind of figure out how to design and construct a garment or a cowl or socks or whatever it may be using those different stitch recipes so yeah choose any yarn in any of the 12 patterns for cows hats sweaters and more customized with over 85 stitch patterns so it's really neat i flipped through it the other day when it came in the mail and i have an idea for using it uh, one of the projects i really want to make is the magnolia sweater and i have the yarn caked up for it but i really want it in a cardigan version and there's a few options for that is one is i could steak it uh another is you know I could figure out how to knit it flat using the pattern directions one of the things with that pattern is it is knit using yoke increases so you knit uh, you increase along the top um, 
kind of out as you go in a circular motion versus a uh, rag lens where you just increase and decrease on a diagonal on either side of the shoulder seam. And I steeked my Zweig, which is also a yoked increase sweater, and it doesn't fit quite right. And I worry if I did that with the Magnolia cardigan, it would not work out. I just, you know, it's designed to be worn one way, not as a cardigan. So what I've been debating doing is uh, lifting the lace motif since it's knit top down and superimposing that chart onto a cardigan pattern at the bottom. And I think I'm going to do that because ultimately I really want another cardigan for my wardrobe and I want one that's not going to flap and fly open. I've been debating using the pattern for the Forest Park cardigan, which is a sweater I knit for my husband last summer uh, because I actually really like the way that one lays. It, it does not flap open and below in the wind and I don't really like to button my cardigans, so I want something that's just going to hang nicely. So I've been doing some pattern browsing on Ravelry because that is probably a possibility in the future. Um, but I might flip through here and see if she has a nice um, cardigan kind of template as well. So that is kind of it for the making nitty gritty details and type stuff. I am not going to natter for very long because I feel like this is long enough as it is and I already feel like I've been talking a mile a minute and yeah. So uh, one of the things that I have been doing is I actually just pulled a bunch of videos off of my phone and I have a couple different videos kind of half made, half prepped and I wasn't sure if you guys would be interested in them. One of them is uh, before I steeked my woodlark shawl, I sat down with some of my old swatches and showed how I prepare a machine steek. So if you guys are interested in that, I can put that together. Um, another one, like I said, is I wrote out how I figured out my bust measurement and adjustment for the love note, even though it's a horizontal bust adjustment. Um, and yeah, there's those. And then I also have uh, the baby doll spin in the works and spinuary. So those will be coming to down the pipeline here soon. And other than that, we have just had a low key kind of holiday. Uh, we went and walked around one of the local parks here that puts up lights. Face masks were required, even though it was an outdoor event. I'll put some footage in here. Um, they always decorate this one oak tree really cool. It looks really pretty lit up. Um, for those of you who know, I work at a museum next door to us is a botanical garden. And so I've been taking some lovely walks through the botanical gardens just to get away from the stress of things um, and all of that good stuff. Uh, for New Year's... <laughs> So New Year's Eve is Mr. Yarn Curators and I's anniversary and this year it was um, up there in eventful and memorable ones because, and, and not for good, I mean it's funny now in hindsight but at the time it was really aggravating. Um, so our only other like memorable comedy of errors for our anniversary was our fifth anniversary. We both had the flu and we were sick as dogs and we ended up celebrating like a week or two later into the new year. So this year, um, even though my husband, bless him, he requested our anniversary off like five times and his boss kept denying his request off and eventually too many people had requested off. She denied it because he wasn't putting in his request properly uh, through the system. But by time he finally figured out how to properly submit his time off request, more people had requested off than is allowed in his office to be off at a given time. Um, so anyways, I had the day off and I was like, you know, I was just relaxing in the house in the morning. He came home for lunch and when he left to go back to work for the afternoon, I was like, okay, well, let me get off my ass. Let me go get groceries because we hadn't been grocery shopping since like the week before Christmas. So bare bones. I mean, the, the, we were just like, okay, what's in the freezer that we can pull out? Let's order our pizza. So anyways, finally pull myself together, go to the grocery store, 
as I'm driving home from the grocery store, there's a four-way stop that you have to go through to get to our neighborhood. Pull up to the four-way stop and um, there's a gentleman lying in the road and it was, um, I believe a moped and a motorcycle had ran into each other. So pull over, call 911. Meanwhile, we still have a full car of groceries. Um, so I walk over, see if he needs first aid because we're everyone in my department. If you work in the parks department, you have to be first aid and CPR trained. He says he's fine. Ambulance shows up. I talk to first responders. I'm like, hey, I didn't really see what was going on. I just, you know, arrived like a 30 seconds after whatever happened happened. Um, so I get home and I'm already rattled enough as it is because that was like five or 10 minutes. And the front, the deadbolt on our front door just decided it was done. It had enough shit from 2020. It couldn't do it anymore. It had zero turns left to give. So you would stick your tea. So I would stick my key in and it just spun in a continuous circle without turning the pins, uh, without turning the deadbolt or anything. We do have two back doors on our house. Um, of course they were both locked and of course I didn't have those keys on my key ring. So I'm like trying to call my husband, trying to send him an SOS and uh, he does customer service all day and uh, they're not allowed on their phones and so I finally caught him on one of his breaks and he's like all right come to my office, come get the house key. In the meantime I've called one of my co-workers who lives like a couple miles down the road I was like, Patricia, <laughs> can I please stick all my cold perishables in your fridge? Um, you know, like right now. So she's like, yeah, give me like five to 10 minutes, uh, clean up the house, get myself cleaned up. Um, so I drove over there, um, talked to my husband, and I had also sent out a text to a few of my other coworkers who work within a different department from me. Uh, three guys, they're natives from where I'm from they know a lot of different people and I was like hey do any of you three know a good locksmith in the area um to which one of the guys was like well I can help you out um so I ended up not going to my husband's office I met um Drew is his name my co-worker who I've been working with for the last three or four months moving our collections from one storage site to a new storage site <coughs> So he had just gotten off of work. He met me here. All right, sorry about that. The camera decided to go topsy turvy. So, anyways, I was just saying he met me in my house, helped me break into my house, crawl through one of the windows that, uh, thank God, absent minded Naomi had forgot to lock and then proceeded to cut the old deadbolt out and help remove it. So, uh, we spent our night tag teaming. John went to Lowe's to go get a new Deadpool. And then once he got back, I then went back to my co-worker's house and retrieved all of our groceries out of her fridge. And then I made what was supposed to be our nice <laughs> anniversary dinner after that. So yeah, that was a day. We ended up celebrating later in the weekend. But um, yeah, it was pretty funny. What I thought was going to be like, oh, I'm going to make a nice dinner. We'll have a good relaxing time together. No, it wasn't that at all. Uh, so that's about the most exciting thing that's happened for us. Otherwise, I have had a few days off of work. Um, I usually take a few days off around our anniversary. And so it's been nice doing projects around the house. We're actually prepping the back of our house because we're going to paint it here soon. So I've spent the weekend pressure washing the back of my house and scraping paint and I have a whole new level of appreciation for Amy Florence and all the work that she did on her own scraping prepping and then painting her front facade because I am over it um but I think that is going to do it for today my neighbor is back with his bottle of spray paint so until next time you guys oh I was going to say one more thing um if you participated in our sneak along Zoe and I are getting together in about two weeks, and we are going to pull winners for that. So keep an eye out for that video. It will be forthcoming. And yeah, until next time, I hope you guys enjoy whatever you're making. I hope you stay happy and healthy in the new year. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.